Welcome back, everyone, to the Lobster Rolls se Season 2, Week 0, the Lobster Labs. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we are into Round 2 of this tournament. And we're going to be starting out with a match between Bakhti Danta and Morjor, which already has gone in with a couple of bands, so Morjor starting out, making Shimmer Shore no longer a thing. And Bandit Planes and Cobalt as well have been taken out by Bakhti Danta, which I can't say I blame them for. Well, Bandit Planes I kind of blame them for. I like that map, but I can understand why you wouldn't want to play it. it is, it's a weird one. It's a cool, it's a beautiful map, but it's also really long and weirdly, like, cloak-oriented. Like, it's weirdly bot-oriented, but also long, so it creates this, it makes it almost longer. Great team map, though. But yeah, 1v1 is a bit big. Trojan Hills is a bit more appropriate for 1v1, as far as that style of map. And Tangerine out as well. Leaving Intersection, Titan Duel, Ravage, Small Supreme Battlefield, of all things, and Rogue's River. Uh, let's see, Morjor gets to pick. I would expect they're going to go for either Ravaged or Titan. Rogue's River hasn't been played a lot. Small Supreme Battlefield is... Honestly, I'm surprised it's even in here. And the what's the rest? I mean, I guess intersection you could play. Oh, we're on rogues. How about that? Okay, we're on rogues river. So that's that. Rogues river, a map which was a thing, kind of a matchmaker before, but a little awkward because it does have. I believe it's set up to have, like, four start points, but I think it's random which two you get. Yeah. So, we know where Morjor is starting. We don't necessarily know where Bakhti Danta is starting. Meh. Oh, I'm I'm making the nerves. I totally understand. Don't worry. I get... I get stream nerves. I get stream nerves. But... That's part of the reason I don't often stream my own play. I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't streamed my own play of 0k in years because I get stream nerves. If you're wondering why I haven't been FP VOD videos for a long time, that's why. Oh. And some cool ambient sounds. Alright, well. Morjor with the rovers. Bacchidanta with the shield bots. Given the map, I'm not really sure which is better. I mean, Morjor has a slight speed advantage, but given how close the main bases are, I don't know. I think Bakhti Danta is... The only thing going for Morjor right now is that Bakhti Danta doesn't know where Morjor is. And on a close start, that's saying a lot. Still, Morjor with darts in both directions. Ah! Yeah. Anyway, Morsha with darts in both directions. It just feels like easily mute. Well, anyway. I sneeze sometimes. I don't have COVID. Don't worry. I'm not going to... Well, okay. That's currently not the primary reason that I'm going to eventually die. I feel I should be specific on that. I will presumably eventually die. Hopefully not of COVID. Currently, not, currently do not have it as far as I'm aware. That got dark. Anyway, back to the game. So, at this point, players do know that at least... Well, at the very least, Morjor knows Bakhti Danta is close. Bakhti Danta probably suspects Morjor is also close. I mean, at the very least, they know that the units are coming from the southern base, so... No reason to suspect that Morjor is being sneaky. Still, the Bakhti Danta is... Oh. They're a little ahead... Economically, maybe, but it's, uh, it's too early to really call, honestly. Morjor, however, two Scorches coming in here. Not a whole lot defending against it. The only problem is going to be where they go to attack, and right now they're attacking at the commander. It's not going to be enough to contest that. Why Morjor's going for the commander, I don't understand. I mean, okay, it's a little late now. The Lotus is up. If they had gone the other way, they would have had a chance to take out Bakhti Danta's entire base and just end the game. 
but they didn't. So that was that. Anyhow. Back to Dante. Should be able to maintain control over their base now. No real issues. There's not really an easy way for Mortar to get in. Same time, though, back to Dante coming around the back with bandits. Not even going to be able to take out a metal extractor. So that is ultimately a scouting run and no more. But now both players know for sure where the other one started out. They just can't really do much about that. Still, the Moors are managing to get their expansion up a little bit faster. Oh, that dart could have been useful. Could have nailed a metal extractor, slowed it down for a bit. Still, back to Dante's behind, metal-wise. Of course, the downside is that their units are cheaper. Or the upside, I suppose, is the units are cheaper, so it's not... In terms of number of units, which right now in the game, that's kind of what counts for you know, being able to actually apply pressure. Morjor is kind of even. Maybe a little behind now that they've actually dropped a bit in their... Well, have dropped some reclaim. Although, more to the point, they don't have actual energy infrastructure. That very well might just be the end of them. Bhakti Danta being pretty prudent about making sure they have power plants as they go, but Morjor nearly forgetting, finally remembering just now to go for it, but had forgotten prior to that, and that is obviously not great. Still, Bhakti Danta is here. Morjor, ooh, losing, ugh, losing a Scorcher like that is not ideal. Commander here to help defend, but what do they have? Machine gun. Well, that's what I would expect. Dealing with a lot of bots, a lot of raiders. Make a machine gun. Come half a reaver. Still, the Morjor is just struggling to get any value off of this. Two, three, three Scorchers for the cost of two bandits. Absolutely value for Bakudanta. On top of the fact that Bakudanta has the stronger economy, Morjor is now just metal accessing. Trying to build up. I mean, the Caretaker is nice to have, but yeah, you want to get that Solar Collector up sooner rather than later. Do the factory in low priority at least, but they only have five metal per second going into the Caretaker. And then the Caretaker will help with the Solar Collector, so that's something. But yeah, it's the lack of energy. That's the key problem. Still, though, just about made up for that, so it's something. But in that time, Bakif Dante just expanding rapidly across the entire map. Reasonably safely, too. A couple of Lotuses at each expansion, having power plants as well. So, you know, slow but steady, getting themselves built up. Well, Morjor having to deal with the attack as they're barely getting their power infrastructure online properly. And even that's not quite enough. Still, the Bandit's not able to get through all the Lotuses. Losing quite a few of them in the process. In fact, that might give Morjor a bit of a chance. Like, once they start getting their power infrastructure up, got a decent amount of reclaim on top of that. So Morjor actually getting a little bit of a chance. Still, Bakhti Danta with a reasonably large and expanding force coming in here. That's, that's looking pretty scary. Got a couple of convicts for the reclaim. Got a bunch of thugs as well. And convicts also to help with the shields for the thugs. Bandits for screening. I mean, granted, Thug coming in here. Not Thug. The Ripper coming in here. Very strong move. Morjor definitely playing this well. I mean, they know the matchup well enough to know. Very least. Use Rippers, because the splash damage from Rippers can hit through shields. Like, it'll hit the shield, but the, the projectile hit the shield. The splash goes through the shield and hits the unit behind it. So Rippers are surprisingly useful against shield bots. Morjor as well coming in through with, again, that reclaim I was talking about. Unfortunately, doesn't quite have the power infrastructure, but fortunately for them, does have at least the caretakers to help set that up. Again, though, it's that production infrastructure that's falling behind Bhakti Danta. They don't have to worry about that. They've got production infrastructure. They have 25 metal per second going into the factory. They have energy. They're building, they're expanding slowly but surely. But again, they're doing it safely, and they're doing it with power structures all around. So they're not in any position where they're going to start accessing. 
Morjor, on the other hand, now finally getting in a position where they can actually spend all their metal. Still, though, reclaim not quite enough, but hey, once they get, get a little more power, they should be fine. At the same time, though, over to the north, Scorcher is coming along the side. Being a bit of a threat, not able to do much. The, the bandits are... Actually, are they going to be enough? Two bandits against two Scorchers. It kind of comes down to how it's placed. One goes down. That should be it. Scorch should be able to just rush up and take them out completely. Well, fight move, Scorchers, doing a reasonably okay job. That is a dead metal extractor. The bandits, however, do manage to defend. Nicely played out by Morjor. Sorry, by Bakif Danta. Morjor left them on fight move. They did okay, but not well enough, I'm afraid. Same time, though, Morjor with Felon with the... That's something nerfed Felon, to be honest, but... Still, nerfed in a way. I mean, it uses a bit more shield, but it also attacks slower, so the shield kind of lasts longer. Still, thugs coming in here. And they're the... Oh, there's no convicts. I was expecting convicts to be going out to help the ball. Now add extra shields, repair as needed. Reclaim as you go. No, they're just hanging out here. Oh, wait. Oh, no, no, no. I know what happened. Uh, yeah, Morjor probably selected all of them. But then, convicts don't get selected by default with your army units. So yeah, you gotta... I can't remember if you have to hold a button to do that. Yeah, if you hold shift, you're okay. But if you're not holding shift, then you don't get them. So they might have intended to do that and just forgotten to hold shift. Or forgotten the fact that the, the way selection priority works. And unfortunately, that does mean their entire shield ball is dead. And Morjor are getting a huge attrition advantage. And despite the early disadvantages, Morjor is really pulling ahead now. They're starting to get a critical mass of fencers. They've got the rippers in here just to help out. Also some badgers, because... I mean, there's some situations where you kind of need badgers, but... That critical mass of fencers, to me, is the scary part. That's the thing that's going to cause problems. Like, that stinger, for instance, is not really a huge threat just for how many fencers there are. Nice, Scorch coming in here too to help out. And that is Baki Danta losing the control of the river. Forced to retreat, the commander should be able to get out of there fast enough so that fencers can't catch up. But still, that's a nice strong approach. Everything in the river, oh, I mean, should be fine. The river's not that shallow. I mean, not that low to the ground. It's not like there's a big height advantage for being in the river. But, yeah, Morjor... Well, I guess to take control back from that river. And as it stands, both play both teams, or both players do effectively have their side of the river completely claimed for themselves. And in all honesty, they're both kind of safe. Like, the large, the farther expansions are pretty safe just because... You know, the fact that they each have their main production facilities on the south side of the map. So, you know, the northwest is totally safe. But then again, you got Mortar's commander here. And you got a few ban a few convicts. You could have someone drop down Proxy Factory and just start going from the other side, maybe? I mean, seems unlikely unless one side is confident they have a massive economic advantage and can get away with it. But, hey, if that happens, that could be cool. Still, though, it's looking like Morjor does have that advantage. I don't know, the commander up front. I don't think they're going to think about that, though. That's kind of a high-level thing to think about when you're worrying about all the little nuts and bolts and making sure everything's still working properly. You have enough energy, you have enough production. Getting the right unit composition. Your opponent isn't building up too much on the other side. Still, though, Morjor, despite not building a proxy factory, is getting a raiding group over there, as is Bakhtiv Danta, though Morjor in a much better position to defend against this. All at the same time, going over to the south side with their primary army. And Bhaktiv down to... Are they going for the center? Almost looks like they're trying to do a sweep up from the side, but they might also just be going to the center and then south. Avoid the river, but... Morjor seems to be... In a, oh, the, Morjor's in a position to intercept that. 
They're actually aware of that. Yeah, they are. They have full radar coverage of the river, so they totally know what's happening. Same time, though, enough of an army coming over to the north side should be able to wreck everything. And Bashivdan has very little to defend against this. At the same time, though, Morjor, they have well entrenched defenses on top of their commander being there and additional constructions for repair. I'm also surprised Morjor's main army isn't attacking, though. I mean, the army over to the north looks like they're just a little confused because they cannot go up this ramp. If they can't go up this side of the cliff, they can go around, but they can't go through. And at the same time, Bakhti Danta also have that gunship switch. Oh. Uh, hmm. Oh! That's what's happened? I can't pause it for them. Oh, there we go. Okay. Ooh, that sucks. Let me unlock your screen. I'm kind of curious what happened, but... Anyway, technical problems. More... Or unless they just locked their OS or whatever. Oh, yeah. By default, tab does that. Not sure it shouldn't be locked to full battlefield, though. Okay, apparently control tab by default is that. I have changed my hockey so much I have no idea how that works, but... Okay, that makes sense. Incidentally, my control tab is pause, so, you know, I, I'm just weird. Yeah. And for that, we are going to see what Mortar actually has up their sleeve when they're able to play the game properly. Not just from a distance. Because it would have been like this. And yeah, from here, a little bit hard to control your forces. I mean, not impossible, but certainly hard to mic or anything. Still, though, Nimbus. Ooh, actually, really smart choice by Mortar to go with the... Oh, sorry, by back down to go for the Nimbuses. Really smart choice by Morshore to go for the Thresher in, pre in preparation for that, though. And now Morshore with a massive army advantage coming in here. Kind of crashes as well to help get rid of some of the drones from Bakidana's commander. And on top of that, the Fencers able to basically wipe out the rest of this. Well, Fencers and Rippers. Rippers, again, that's the main force he got here to wipe this out. Morshore might have to be a little bit concerned about the attack over the eastern side of the map, but... Not that much of a problem, so it looks like Morjur will be able to maintain pressure along Bakivdanta's front line. The Morjur's commander, I think, is in trouble. I mean, they're trying, but it's just them. Still, the rest of the army coming along the side, or the rest of the harassment group coming along the side. Able to get rid of some of the metal extractors, some of the... Can I get rid of any of the Lotus? Like, the Lotus is trying to kill you! Alright, well, they're not micro now, that's for sure. Same time, their commander under heavy fire. The Stardust has gone down. Faraday doing a good job of holding the forces back. Mortar's commander is just going to have to run away. Pretty much lost that north side of the map. Same time, the primary army coming over here in the south. Should be able to set up. A little iffy, though. The, scorch the Stingers are taking them out. The Rippers are also getting kind of caught on each other. But that is the entire mobile force dead. One of the Stingers has gone down. The other Stinger should go down shortly. Bakidana's commander... So heavy on this. That, I don't know, it's looking... Look like it's not going to be an easy kill. Especially now with the Stinger in the way on top of everything the commander has set up. The Rippers retreating out of there. Throwing some Badger mines out, but it's... Not going to be enough to save them. Bakidana at the same time able to take out the western side. And that's massively crippling Morshore's economy. Same time, the Mortar still has some of their forces over here, but again, trying to cross the hill directly rather than going around it. The well, Bakhtudan is that? No, never mind. Bakhtudan is primarily focused on overdrive and reclaim, so it's not too uneven between the two. 
spend a lot of money on their commander, too. So that's a lot that Moors are going to take advantage of in terms of army value. The attrition is even. The harassment is on the way. There it goes. Be able to take out the rest of all these metal extractors. Get rid of that Lotus, please. No, okay, fine. You're not gonna. You wanna live? There we go. Get rid of the Lotus. Get rid of the metal extractors. Be safe about doing it. That was sufficiently safe. Of course, death explosions are a thing. Can never forget that. Oof. And that is. Well, Stinger's still around at least, but yeah, that's looking pretty iffy. Man, all these, just right here, all these masons. I mean, the repair the repair is great, but throw a couple of them on reclaim, and Morsher will, t like, if Morsher puts a couple of them on reclaim, they've got this game in the bag. Like, they, they're going to have the economy to easily power through anything. Even if they're losing units. And honestly, they have a great composition for dealing with what Bakhti Tanta has set up. Yeah, the crashes have helped. I mean, the Nemesis are doing, actually, they're doing a number on the crashes, come to think of it not working out as well as you would expect on paper, just for the sheer amount of them. I mean, 3,000 metal worth of crashers compared to 600 metal worth of... Sorry. I mean, Nimbus is worth, compared to 600 metal worth of crashers. Definitely putting more in an awkward position. I'm actually not sure what they would use, other than just more crashers or switch factor. Like, switch to air factor or something and just use raptors to take them out. Of course, the other problem is that Morjor has to split their forces back to Dante with the felons, thugs in the back. I mean, that's keeping Morjor from getting their main economy going. Granted, right at the same time, Scorch is coming around the side as well, doing its job. Able to take out all the metal extractors that back to Dante had built to the north. So, with that, Morjor remains slightly ahead. And honestly, in terms of metal value, they are massively ahead. Oops. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay, we're back. Right camera. Anyway, no, what I wanted to do is Alt-F1, so I want to see what's going on in terms of army value. Sorry about blocking the thing for a sec. Morjor ahead by about 2,000 metal for army value. Defense value is even. Other value... Wow, Bakitan has put 3,000 metal in their commander more than Morjor. Otherwise, fairly even. So overall, yeah, Morjor is doing definitely better. Though Bakhti Danta, oh, their attrition is still working out nicely, but this may be the end of that Bakhti Danta commander is coming forward. Machine gun, slam rocket, or that's not slam rocket, machine gun, and yeah, napalm rocket. Slam actually would be a good idea in this context, but no, napalm launcher with a rocket, napalm rocket. Morjor dealing with attacks on multiple fronts here. I mean, they'll be okay if they can micro this out, but that feels like a bit of an ask. Like, they have thus far been kind of like single minded when it comes to how they're setting up their army and how they're controlling it, but it's kind of working out. I mean, Morjor's able to still take out Baki Danta's army reasonably okay. It's the Nimbuses are causing problems. Still more crashes being built up does help out. Unfortunately, a lot of the backline is not being helped out, and the commander as well has gone down. That leaves the entire north or western and southwest side of the map pretty much open. Morsor has nothing to help build that up. And unfortunately, doesn't really have the forces to completely come in here either. Honestly, Ravagers. Like, get a dozen Ravagers, that would probably be enough of a meat shield to do the trick. Still, though, we're getting Reclaim, and I love to see it. And we are... Okay, we do have an air switch for the Raptors. So that works, too. So, yeah, that's that. And... As far as everything else is concerned, Morjor... Oof, they are... Going to be able to defend this reasonably okay, but at the cost of basically losing the entire front line... Bakhti Danta, however, doesn't have much of a follow-up force. I mean, their their force is this felon thug ball, which, honestly, its days are numbered. Like, it's... It is getting heavily attacked. There's not a whole lot it can do to defend itself. And that's... 
Now it's finally opening things back up for Bakhtiv Danta to start rebuilding over to the northwest, or over to the southwest and due west. Still, though, the Raptor is up. And the rest of the forces are, at the very least, still protecting their side of the river. Are they going for... Oh, maybe they're going for a flank. I almost looks like they want to go around the side through here and down. Which could be a good idea. I mean, the Raptors are able to defend against the Nimbuses. That's been the main problem. The remaining forces down here... I think will be enough to defend. A little hard to call. There's not a lot of anti-air, so the Nimbuses aren't really well defended, except for the shields themselves. Which, again, all these... All these claws will be able to help get rid of. Oof. Oh, but that shields... Oh, that Aspis is actually doing work. Kind of funny. It, oh, they are they are protected. I was going to say, it's kind of funny. They're not quite even protected. No, they are protected. Absolutely protected. Oof. And that takes out all the raptors. There's still crashes here in the base. There's five of them is not nearly enough, though. Undeterred, Morjor does continue to march over to the northwest. Looking to take that out completely. Thunderbird coming down here. Takes out the shields. There we go. Would have been a little handy earlier, but still, getting rid of all the ground forces, that would be a problem. And that is a lot of... That's a lot of dead shields. We've seen a lot of dead Nimbuses, too, if they're not careful. And that's got another... Okay, that's back up, but still. Drains the shields as well as just disabling them briefly. I think Morjor might have managed to seal the game. It's, it's a bit of a Hail Mary pass. They are well behind an economy, and they are not... Doing too hot in terms of army value. I think they're... Yeah, back to your is ahead by a thousand metal. But most of that's Nimbuses. And also the Guardian Commander being the main hurdle. Honestly, that commander's been the biggest hurdle this entire time. Though, properly flying force coming in here from the north side should be able to help take that out. And the Eden is a bit of a waste. I mean, the Thunderbird did its job. I suppose it could do more job, but... The job it did was its job. Like, that's all it really needed to do. I mean, that that kept Morjor safe while their flank force is able to get in a position. Now the flank force is able to completely execute in their position. Thunderbird able to come into the commander. Not quite able to fully disarm, but does at least... Well, that does help, I guess. I mean, not much else really to affect that. Ah, there we go. Second Thunderbird comes in, disables the commander. And that opens everything right up on top of all the forces over this north. The Nimbus is against way too many fencers and not even any crashes, just the fencers. Flex AA to the rescue. Able to take out all the Nimbuses and Bakidanta, I think, just threw the game away with those Nimbuses. More able to take the advantage on the attrition. Able to, more importantly, get in position to take out the factories. And that could very well be it. Defensive forces aren't even coming back. Bakidanta looking for a counterattack. Possibly a base trade, but not going back to defend. Lost the tank factory. Lost the gunship plant. Fusion Reactor is going to go down soon afterwards. The Shieldbot factory is still up, but that's factory's days are numbered, and the caretakers are gone as well, so there's not a whole lot that can be done to rebuild in a hurry. Bakhtiv Danta's army is this and nothing else, as their Shieldbot factory is just leveled. No production, very little economy. Commander is the only real asset they have on top of it's these forces here. And that's it. While well, Morjor has been able to gradually rebuild over the western side of the map while continuing to harass everything Bakhtiv Danta has built. And Bakhtiv Danta realizes the problem, throws in the towel, and that is game. And actually the last game for round two. Turns out I picked the long one. Which I guess is a good thing, because it means I picked the even one. I suppose. Anyway, with that, we are going to be moving on to round three very shortly, so stay tuned as we throw to a break.